The book is um, bookended with a before and after of a town called APAC, yeah, APAC. Which, is, yeah. which is the heart of malarial Africa. Describe the before and after, because in a way it, it symbolizes many of the changes. So, that yeah, there place. was a research paper that discovered uh, that, that, that put APAC as, as, as the most malarial town on earth. The average person there gets bitten, or at the start of, before the campaign reached it, was getting bitten four times a day by malaria infected mosquito, effectively catching malaria four times a day. And I went because it felt important that if I was going to be writing about how important the malaria campaign was, I needed to see how bad it could get, basically. Um, so I, I drove up, I drove myself. Um, it felt uh, a dangerous enough place that I didn't really want to take a taxi. And um, it was, uh, well, when I first, I rolled into town in the, in the late afternoon and it was weird. Um, it was totally deserted and I ro everything seemed to be shut up and um, and then this naked man just kind of rolled out of a side street with sort of twigs in his hair, very sort of filthy and didn't seem to sort of see me and was sort of murmuring and and then there was another guy, almost exactly the same, naked, murmuring and then there was a third guy sitting sitting by the side of the road with his head in his hands just sort of groaning and rocking. And I, you know, I mean, it felt like a daylight horror movie, you know, like I'd, like I'd driven into a town full of zombies or something. And, I, and I, it's a very small town. I drove around, covered almost every street, and um, eventually found a, a signboard announcing the presence of the, the local health centre. Um, there was no one there. I knocked, walked in. Nobody found my way down a corridor, knocked on a door. There was a voice behind saying, come in, and it was the district health commissioner. Um, and, uh, and I said, you know, I mean, we, I introduced myself and I said, well, who are those guys outside? You know, and he goes, well, that's, that's cerebral malaria. You know, when you're a, you get it when you're a kid and, and you never recover. And it, it, basically, he laid out all the statistics for me. Uh, I think it was in, in a population of half a million, 124,000 people a year were getting malaria. Mm. Uh, so, you know, a quarter. Um, so the after... After the campaign was run in the town, what what did the town look right. like? Right. Well, so um, well, just I mean, before I mean, there was no there was no business. That malaria had crushed this place. The only thing going on in the main high street, there were ten pharmacists and there were about um, uh, you know and a few funeral takers and churches. Mm. That was it. The whole town's economy uh, was focused on death and illness. Um, and I went back. I didn't even know whether the malaria campaign had been through, and I was worried that it might not have because it's a fairly remote place on a, on a marsh in the middle of Uganda but I went back and even before I got there it was apparent something was going on you know as I said before nobody had even stepped outside now I drove in at about 9 or 10 in the evening which is prime mosquito time and uh, 20 k's outside we passed this little sort of beer place 50 people outside it dancing big fire going on party I'm weird we pass uh, we could drive another 10 k's and I'd pass another similar place this time there's 200 people outside we get to town everybody's doing a kind of Italian passeggiata out in the streets there are hundreds if not thousands of people walking around chatting mm. to their neighbors and I can't believe it you know I go to the hotel where I stayed in before this tiny little three dollar a night guest house it's full I go to another place it's full I eventually beg a room off someone you know um, and I, you know, I get under my mosquito net. I'm quite puzzled by this. I go to sleep. I wake up in the morning. It's only in the morning I realise I haven't got a mosquito bite at all anywhere. And we go into town, and it's a traffic jam. Mm -hmm. There are kids going to school. All the businesses are open. Some guy, one of the cafes that was completely shuttered up before, has has got tables outside. Has done a paint job on itself. There's a Coca-Cola truck come in that's unloading all these soft drinks and so on. I mean, the place is just unrecognisable. And, um, and I went to the hospital, uh, which I became quite familiar with from, the, from my first visit, and, and asked to see the, the statistics. It was a great little statistician there. Um, and whereas before they were losing, well, the whole children's ward was overflowing, and there were kids sleeping in the corridor and so on, it, it was mostly empty. It was like maybe a third of the beds were being used. Um, and whereas before they'd been losing 15, up to 15, 20, 25 kids a, a week or something, the malaria campaign had come through in June. I was there in September. And the numbers had plummeted. 
they'd gone from three and a half thousand cases a week to three thousand to two and a half thousand to two thousand to around about fifteen hundred and it's stabilized around there but and then you know and that was in a matter of weeks that was about six weeks and um and I, went, I asked to look at a book, and I, and I, and I, um, I went through the sort of columns, and there's columns of deaths and columns of illnesses and so on. The, the most recent statistics for October 2010, in the only hospital, in the most malarial town on earth, um, no, dial, no child died from malaria. I mean, it was, it was very moving, actually. I found it... Um, but before... You had aid agencies there, as you point out in the book, from Germany and the European Union, funding gender-based violence, yes. ob organic farmers objecting to the use of DDT. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean I, you know, I've seen some pretty egregious uh, misplaced aid programs in my time. But, okay, so gender-based violence, that's a hot topic in the aid world right now. Okay, you know, but to, 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 to fund a, a, a program that's to do with protecting women and children that doesn't have a malarial element in the most malarial town on earth. Malaria being a disease that kills children felt a bit short-sighted, but worse than that was this, uh, I think it was German-funded um, swamp preservation project. I mean, my God, there were these notice boards all over town saying, don't drain the swamps, save the swamps, swamps are our life. I mean, swamps are our life? No, swamps are our death. Yeah. This is where death breeds for these people, and they're being asked to save the frog. Uh, I mean, it just, it was absolutely astounding, and, and, and it can only be a result of someone never having been there. Because if you go there, you work out what these people need in seconds. Uh, if you don't go there, you'd probably think saving the frog and biodiversity and love the swamp was a fantastic idea. Probably from Belgium. Alex, thanks for talking to me today. Sure.